You're watching the Chris 6 News Back to School Town Hall, brought to you with limited commercial interruption by the law offices of Herman and Herman. Welcome back, everyone. You know, we had dozens of questions like this one from David Meddy. How are we going to ensure the safety of our children, you know, reassembling together and, and uh, moving forward? So in order to reestablish that effective learning environment that we all count on. Dr. Anjoum, as a pulmonary specialist, you have seen COVID and its effects firsthand. In fact, you're at the hospital right now. So the question to you as our medical expert, is it safe for our kids to go back to school in person? I think that we, you know, I'm not going to do uh, the whole debate whether it's, uh, you know, important to open up and reopen schools. I think that's already established uh, that this is something that as a nation, we need to move in that direction. Um, but from a you know, clinical uh, standpoint of view, we know that children less than 18 years of age, um, they usually experience very mild or sometimes uh, you know, no symptoms at all uh, in terms of COVID-19. And uh, as compared to their adults, um, they are you know, much less likely to face any severe consequences uh, from this infection. And I think we have uh, a very good plan as far as I have heard from everybody uh, in terms of reopening and always trying to see and reassess the situation and see if we need to fall back to remote learning again as compared to you know, face-to-face -face learning. To cut the long story short, I think um, in terms of the infection rates, uh, we do not see um, any significant problems with children uh, getting affected uh, by it and being very sick. But again, you know, the risk of community transmission is something uh, that looms at large. But the risk is there. And uh, that leads me to my next question. Uh, you know, the big concern being teachers, staff, adults, like you were saying, Dr. Anjum. James Davis writes in, I am a teacher. I have many, many friends that are older and all have some sort of medical issues. What's going to happen if they get sick? How are schools going to handle that? Also, Raul Garza asked, a lot of our teachers are in their 40s, 50s, 60s age range. What will be done to protect them as well as the students? And Charlie Flores says, what will school districts do when a teacher gets infected? I will open it up to the panel. Whoever wants to start first. Well, let me if I could address that because I think it, it may be a little easier um, in Fremont to address that than, than it is in Corpus Christi. Uh, we're limiting um, our in-person to 11 to 1. Um, we're, uh, that will um, raise the odds in our favor of everyone practicing social distance. We also have a very, very comprehensive uh, response recovery and redesign plan that is very specific regarding if a teacher or staff member starts exhibiting symptoms, what happens next. And if they are quarantined, then we're gonna protect those people. They're not gonna be using any of their benefits while they're away from school. And then if we have a student that's at school and starts exhibiting high temperature, whatever the symptoms are, sore throat, um, we have an isolation area at each of our campuses until the parents can come and pick the student up. Well, uh, I wanted to say uh, our teachers are very apprehensive, and rightfully so. This is a scary environment that we're in. And, and so if we don't practice the, what the CDC, what common sense tells us, that using a face mask, the social distancing, uh, uh, good hygiene of washing our hands on a regular basis and not take any of that lightly, um, then I think we're going to be doing just fine when, when we open school with smaller environments. Let's be clear, smaller environments. But it's not only just to take care of our teachers, but all of the employees uh, that on that campus. Dr. Cavazos, your school board just approved a 3% pay raise for your teachers, which is an amazing gesture, especially at this time. Uh, what is your district's plan when a teacher gets sick, infected? How do you deal with that? I think many districts are using this uh, a process map 
that kind of that outlines each um, we each situation that might occur, you know, if there are symptoms, but not positive, if there are positive, uh, but no symptoms, etc. And so we have a, a step by step process for us to follow for each um, staff member. We also have um, a facilities response protocol that goes from level one to level five that helps us determine the amount um, if we close a classroom, if we close a, a school, um, based on cases that are confirmed um, with, within the facility. So, you know, we've, like the others, you know, we are, our employees are of utmost importance to us. And, you know, our auxiliary staff have been working since all the entire time since March 13th, they have been going in and cleaning and getting things ready um, this entire time and throughout the summer. And so, you know, we, we are here to support them. Um, but it, the, the fear is very real for um, the adults, especially in, um, through, in this situation. And Dr. Hernandez, what does that look like for CCISD? And also, will there be some way where if a teacher gets sick, they don't have to use their PTO? How, how does that look like? Uh, we have a similar process. We have a flow chart that kind of guides our schools on what to do if those different scenarios happen. Uh, of course, as mentioned by everyone, the safety is the most important for our teachers, our students, and all of our staff in the schools and um, transportation, you named all of them. Regardless of what the case is, treating them all with urgency and making sure that we're following up with questioning who in contact, who was in contact with that individual, are sanitizing immediately uh, like we would be doing, but then it would be an extra deep cleaning in that particular classroom or that particular area of the school. And then just making sure that we're adhering to all the health guidelines in place. And that leads me right into the next question from our viewer, Joe Vasquez, who says, what happens when anyone in the classroom becomes positive? What's the protocol then? I think immediately for all of us, it would be removal of the employee and then immediate questioning as to where they were in the school other than their classroom, who all they came into contact with, and then contacting those individuals as well and, and providing some questioning and going through the procedures that are in place and then requiring that they quarantine or stay home for a number of days, as well as during the time that they're under the care of a physician. Um, and then as far as closure, it would be closure of the, of the class itself, maybe a particular area of the school. Uh, and I'm using examples from the full range of a, of a veterans memorial with 2,000 plus students in one school, and then another campus that might have three to 400 students in a school. And that's where you're just gonna have to assess, is it something we can do by containing and closing down one wing of classrooms or does it require closing the entire school? Will there be notices sent out if somebody tests positive? Will they be very uh, clear in, in what happened or will it be very vague because of HIPAA? We had uh, one of our viewers ask that question. Well, and so we're all in the same boat with that. To the extent possible, we're gonna be very transparent and provide as much as we possibly can uh, with nothing to hide and letting our parents know exactly where we stand. We've also been doing that as a district over the summer. You know, many employees of the district who've tested positive, those are employees that aren't even at the district. But uh, just sharing that information, keeping people informed is what we would do during the school year as well. You know, depending on the exposure and just like uh, Roland said, uh, how much of the building does it affect? But Annette Rodriguez, the health director uh, uh, of the city of Corpus Christi, let me tell you, she's phenomenal. And she's a wonderful resource. Uh, and, and West also has reached out to her on a number of things uh, related to the virus uh, and some do's and don'ts and suggestions and, and, and I, I share that because that's great news to know uh, in our community how well uh, versed she is and is wanting to assist um, school districts in any way possible. Yeah, I want to I echo Conrado's point there. 
the last thing I think any of us want to do is turn into public health officials and make those type of calls that people with greater expertise such as us, such as our doctor that we have here, <clears throat> and the people in Alice who give us great information, we have got to rely on their expertise to make these tough decisions for each of our schools. Dr. Anjum, after hearing what uh, the superintendents have to say, anything that you, um, you want to say about their plans, especially if, if somebody's infected? Uh, no, I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very uh, promising to, to hear everybody speak uh, about their plans and, um, and very uh, reassuring, I think, uh, the way things have been outlined and all the plans are in place. I just uh, sometimes feel a little uh, sad and feel that it's tragic that we are having um, this conversation in uh, United States where we have multiple instances and examples of various countries across the world who have opened schools and they have not had any problems just because I think, you know, their social distancing practices, uh, hygienic practices, all those things were, were so good uh, that as soon as this virus hit them and, you know, with all the social distancing um, and taking all the necessary precautions during the summer months, they were able to open, you know, schools during the fall. And um, I just uh, hope that people realize that these are the things that they need to keep practicing. Um, and hopefully we don't run into any big issues later on. And um, speaking of hygiene and social distancing, we are going to talk about that. How do you enforce that in your schools when it's time to go um, you know, into the classroom, into the buildings, into the schools themselves? So we're going to take a quick break and be right back. The Back to School Town Hall is a presentation of Chris 6 News and has been brought to you by the Law Offices of Herman and Herman.